resurrection the bible says i am the resurrection and the life that means he gives you mobility that's why the scripture says he took me out of the miry clay he set my feet upon a rock oh god that stand up but then it says he established my goings oh god that's the resurrection and the life Hello, what's up preacher men? Welcome to another episode. Guys, it's all I could say today is brr. It's cold outside. <laughs> yeah, too cold, too cold. You know, we can't, we, we're not really accustomed to that kind of thing. So, but we have to deal with what we have. So it's cold. I don't know how many people is going to show up for church today, but hopefully everybody will be here. And uh, we are pre-recording this. So therefore, we um are breaking fast today isn't that awesome yes so yeah. let me tell you who's in the in the studio we have joshua and the man they call bug Hola. elisha hello. yeah hello right so my boys are here with me and we are recording this let me remind you before we get into what we're going to talk about today let me remind you that next episode which is next thursday at 5 p.m we'll be doing our first live stream episode. You know, normally we pre-record this, but that one is going to be live. You're going to see all the mistakes, all the, you know, whatever could go wrong. You know, if it goes wrong, you'll see it. If it goes right, you'll see that too. So I encourage you to tune in at 5 p.m. for the live stream. Hopefully you guys, you know, will enjoy it. Today I have a topic that's been on my mind a little bit and, um, I thought I should, I should share it with you. So let's get into the topic of the day. I can still remember it today as if it was only yesterday. The excitement of starting a new school, the nervousness of not knowing anyone in the classroom. I was entrenched in the awe and intensity of the moment. I was now in high school. Not only that, but one of the best high schools in the country. I could still remember every boy in my class. It was an all-boys school. I could still remember their immature little faces. Most of us were only around 10 or 11. Yes, we start high school at that age in Trinidad. Even though I spent most of my days wanting to get out, I now realize how much I loved my time there. The memories of being there are quite euphoric. Unfortunately, like most young people, and some immature adults, I never stopped to assess the value of the moments spent there. From the days on the football field to going down High Street during lunchtime, from the melodious echoes of Tell of My Love to the islands reverberating through the hallowed corridors, to the incessant chants of half day, half day, until Mikey, the principal, relented, I loved it all. I knew I was privileged to be there. What I did not know is that those days could never ever be recreated. Once they were done, they were gone. Each day was almost like an anomaly, fully unique in its nature and elements. Even if one were to go back to try to recreate those moments by getting all the boys from a class together and bringing in the same teachers, it's still no longer feasible. Why? Because some of the boys are no longer with us. Campon is no longer there and Dean is gone. I can never face Forge on the small goal field again. Thought of it is quite sobering. Some of the teachers are no longer alive as well. In retrospect, I would have done so many things differently. I would use the time differently. I would spend less time griping about the work and just do it. I would not worry about being accepted and just be me. I would laugh a lot more, even though I laughed a lot. I would pursue peace with everyone. I would hold on to my valued friends, for you never know how long they'd be around. I would not be so concerned about the future that I missed my present. Sadly, all these things you learn in retrospect. Hindsight is certainly 2020. Today, I'm in a different place in my life, a place I'm thoroughly enjoying, but of the old days, at least I have my memories. When I go home, I try to go back to my school and simply walk around to inject a little life into those memories. Here's the wisdom. All the lessons that I've learned in retrospect can be applied today. I live each moment constantly present. 
I don't want to repeat the same errors I made as a child. I appreciate the people around me because you never know how long they're going to be around. I try to treat them with the grace, dignity and respect they deserve. I try to identify each moment that I believe would be a significant memory and I maximize it. I enjoy every mouthful of pleasurable food. I laugh from my belly and I love with my heart. One of my favorite singers ever, Shade, sang a song called Cherish the Day. That is such good advice. Every day is a gift from God. Do not be absent in your own life. Don't get me wrong. I love the life that I've lived to this point. Was it perfect? No, but life is about learning, growing, and moving. The Bible says that we are striving to perfection. What good are lessons learned if they are not lessons practiced? So value what you have. Stop looking at what someone else has. What's yours is yours. God bless you with that. Cherish it. And to all my brothers from Presentation College San Fernando, if you see this, thank you for seven awesome years. And I hope that you've learned the same lessons I have. Cherish the day. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Um, that's the truth. And uh, I hope you've been blessed by it. And like I said, you know, don't miss a moment. Enjoy your life. Don't worry over things that go wrong. Think about the things that go right. And some of you might say, well, Pastor Jay, nothing's going right. Well, that's not true. You're breathing. You're alive. You're living. And guess what? You have hope for tomorrow. So something's going right. You know, so without any further delay, let's get into the Preacher Man clip of the day. When we lay ourselves upon the altar, that is the voluntary giving of ourselves. By the time I'm done with this point, some of you are going to want to lay here for a whole different reason. Yeah. And this is the point of death. This is the point where the old Nick dies. This is the point where the old drug abuser the old wife beater. That's hypothetical. That's not Nick. Because Angie would have beat him up first. Yeah. The old womanizer. The old money hungry, money grubbing, stingy old Grinch has to lay down and die. Nobody wants to do this. This only happens in the light of who God is. Woo! When you see the pastor preach the message. And you made a conscious decision to turn. And then you find yourself between the porch and the altar. At the, at the, at the, at the, at the porch you realize, woe is me for I am undone. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. And from that realization, from that divine realization, you advance toward the cross. And upon the cross you see a man who took your place. But you're not going to receive what he had done until you do this. That's why God told you to go before the altar, to lay it all down. Somebody touch your neighbor, tell him, put it down. Put it down. Can't you realize that you've been carrying around some things for way too long? You've been carrying around depression for way too long. You've been carrying around anxiety for way too long. You've been walking around with hell on your back for way too long. Somebody, it's about time. You get up and walk in the victory that God had planned for you. God didn't save you to be broke, busted, disgusted, defeated. God saved you so that you would know what his power and authority is. If you remember Sunday, the father said, put a robe on him and put a ring on his finger. That's the authority of the living God. That's why God said it. The day the old prodigal boy, he walked out on his father. He found himself in a pig pen. Guess what? The day he came back to his father, that was the death of him. You know why, how I know that? Because he said it. He said rejoice. He said it to the other brother. He said rejoice for your brother was dead but is alive again. Anybody hearing me? Oh God. Yeah, I'm preaching the message breathe. Yeah. He's going to raise you up. He's going to give you life. I didn't say it. Make you too excited. Yeah. 
I could preach this to them. I preached this to you before, but some of them probably didn't hear it. You know, that's all right. Yeah. Our God didn't just say, I'm the resurrection. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Anybody getting that? Yeah. That's why the word resurrection, it means to stand up. Stand up. Yeah. The resurrection means to stand up. That's what it is. Stop moving. Yeah. And a lot of people, when they come to Jesus, that's all they do. But God didn't say, I'm just the resurrection. The Bible says, I am the resurrection and the life. That means he gives you mobility. That's why the scripture says, he took me out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock. Oh God, that stand up. But then it says, he established my goings. Oh God. That's the resurrection and the life. Anybody in here have life tonight? I know it's a Tuesday night and you don't feel like you have much life. But would somebody give God a life and he prays in here? Oh God, put aside the little hunger, pain and the little sickness that you've been feeling. It's about time we let the world know that our God is the resurrection and the life. Yeah. It's time for us to get a little irritating. Anybody ready to get irritating with me? Dev, you're ready to get irritating with me? Yeah, well, you're irritated people anyway. When you go there, you're also always so happy and bubbly. This job killing, you know, but normally you're happy and you're bubbly and, you're, and every time you meet people, it's like, hey, you want to come to my church? You know what that is? That is irritating. But you see, we can't help it because our God is the resurrection and the life yeah so when you see you meet me don't come around me with your pity party why because my bubbly demeanor is going to just sour you up why because i can't help but be happy oh god what you're happy about well let me explain to you my bible says blessed are the poor you know what that word blessed means it means happy blessed are the poor in spirit poor in spirit tells you those that have abandoned their own will to the will of god That's what that means so i've abandoned myself on the altar a long time ago and watch me now i'm blessed yeah i'm blessed that's why i preach hard whether we have people or whether we don't yeah that's why i give god praise whether you like it or whether you don't that's why i shout if you're shouting or you're not shouting but tonight i feel somebody wants to shout with me why because i've been laying down for too long the enemy put you on your back for too long but somebody's about to get up somebody's about to shout somebody's to give god a praise right yes so that was the clip preacher man clip of the day so i want to remind you to to like comment share subscribe you know give give us some feedback on as to how you've been blessed by the preacher man podcast thus far and and i want to remind you again we have our live stream coming up on uh coming up next week thursday you know so guys i hope to see every single one of you there i hope that while we're doing it you could comment and and uh, share your thoughts and things like that and that day i'm going to be praying as well don't forget we have our monday live prayer at midday you know so i hope that you know more of you could join into that and i'll enjoy doing that it's it's awesome so you know and we've been getting some good reports from it so we love you we thank god for you i thank god for everybody who's a part of the pm insider community i thank you f- i thank all the people for subscribing to youtube preacher man tv right so guys we are privileged and blessed to have every single one of you so we love you and we will see you next time god bless you